So this is my modified off-ramp system. Um, I really like the uh, the concept that Lemures 3 had, but instead of having the cart keep going at the switching station, I actually just wanted to be able to pick whether I wanted to exit or continue. Um, so I sort of made my own little modified version, and I filled the floor full of glass so you guys could uh, see what's going on. Um, so I'll just start right out here and just do a couple demos, and then I'll then I'll explain what's happening underground. So I get just pretend that that would be I don't know from your main base or from any other base really, and you get here, you stop on the pressure plate. That cart booster is not coming up. It's gonna wait until I press an input. So say I want to exit, I want to drive into the ocean. So I press press exit, and the booster comes up, and it puts me into the ocean, which would be. I don't know, whatever whatever base is at that station, or uh, or whatever's at that off ramp. Um, and then you come back, and this time I'll go, I'll continue on the main main highway. So um, if I continue, the booster comes back up, boosts me, and instead this time I go to the right, and uh, and I fall in this little hole, which uh, I don't know, it's just there for fun. So now I'll explain a little bit about how all this works. Um, first I'll explain the cart mechanics because they're they're pretty simple. Um, it's it's not too much of a deviation from the standard uh, uh, boot, uh, cart holding stuff. Um, it's just going around and resetting and, and it just keeps going forever until uh, this right here, this curve gets switched. And then it jumps the track and uh, goes up. What I added though was I added this nice little uh, reset, so it doesn't have to do any kind of looping. It just comes back down and and resets all over again. What's nice about um, the minecart mechanics right now is that even though the minecart's going to be coming in and going horizontal, or it's going to be going perpendicular to this track, it's still going to hit this cobblestone block, fall down, and realign itself um, with this. Since this minecart is going to be right down there, since it's... Uh, since when this one releases, it's going to be stuck there. When this one falls, it automatically just restarts this looping reset again and waits for another input. And if I stand on here and then press this, you can see what happens. Oop. Whoopsies. I didn't wait long enough. There you go. Whoops. Oh, come on. That was my fault. <laughs> ah, crud. Okay, good. It didn't reset anything. Every once in a while, if you screw up with with minecarts and blocks, and or with minecart track and blocks, it screws up the track, and you have to sort of rebuild it. Anyway, back to what I was trying to do. Wait till the cart comes up, and step off the plate, and see it goes down, and then just resets nicely like that, and uh, then it just sits there and waits for input. It's a nice, quick little easy way to reset without having to do any sort of weird track shifting. Wow, that was a weird frame skip. Sorry about that. Oh, whoops, I wanted to go down here. <laughs> um, just real quickly, this this was the only part of this that I wasn't real pleased with, um, because I like to hide my redstone, usually. Um, you could fix this by moving all of this stuff, all, um, all of these track pieces, and this whole RS logic gate down here, one block backwards, and you could just add a fifth layer to this wall, and then that last little thing would be hidden. It's, it's as thick as it is, again, to hide the, the redstone wire, which sucks, but I would rather hide it in a big blocky thing than have redstone exposed everywhere. Anyway, um, this is the first redstone logic device. It is a RS NOR latch. Um, what these RS NOR latches do is they get one input that sets the latch, and the latch stays set until the other input resets the latch. This left button is the input that's resetting the latch, and this right input is the button that's setting the latch. Um, I added this inverter here because originally when I uh, constructed this, I noticed that when you press the right button, it switched the track to the left, and when you press the left button, it switched the track to the right. Um, so I just dropped this little inverter in there, hooked it up to the output of the RS, lat RS NOR latch, and um, that way it fixed it and it switched those two directions and it works properly. Now this, all this logic here is devoted to letting the player wait 
until, or letting the booster wait until the player picks a location. Um, it actually does a couple things. The, the biggest thing here is this input right here, which is the pressure plate. That stone pressure plate is right above this redstone wire. And it comes down here, and it sets, it has two inputs. The first input is to this AND gate, so when, the, when you're on the pressure plate, one of the AND gate conditions is fulfilled. Um, the, the pressure plate also controls this wire right here, which is inverted into this RS uh, NOR latch, this second one. Um, basically what this does, since it's inverted, is it constantly tells the latch, hey, stay on, keep your output on until um, somebody's on top of this, on top of the uh, pressure plate. So when somebody's on the pressure plate, this is on, which inverts this input, which lets, um, lets this side reset the RS NOR latch. Because normally what happens is th these inputs try to reset the latch, but since this is on all the time, it can't reset the latch, so you can't call uh, this booster cart. Um, this input from this side, it, I just connected the two buttons uh, together to this one side of the latch. Um, this AND gate, again, takes input from the output of the RS NOR latch and this pressure plate. So the AND gate basically acts as a conditional device saying if somebody is standing on the pressure plate and if the player has uh, pressed a button deciding on a location, then um, set the output to ON and toggle this redstone torch right here, which means release this booster. Um, that's pretty much it. I'll just show you again that it, it works pretty well. Oh, uh, the one other thing is that if you stand on this button and press either of the two buttons, and then if you stay on this pressure plate, it just keeps looping around. That's because I, I didn't feel it was really necessary to add any kind of uh, spam prevention stuff because nobody's going to stand on their own pressure plate except me. <laughs> um, if you want to implement this on a server where uh, where you'd want to prevent people from spamming it and, and people from sort of standing in the way, um, you might want to prevent, or you might want to implement some sort of spam prevention that keeps this cart from coming over and over again. Really though, it's just going in a loop, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, also, when you step off of this pressure plate, it resets both sides of the AND gate, so if you were to press a button and not be on the pressure plate, it wouldn't call up the booster. And you can see there, when I press this button, um, it starts to disable that torch on the AND gate, but then real quickly it, it uh, sets this NOR latch again um, so that it doesn't call the booster. Alright, well, uh, thanks for watching, I hope you learned something, and, uh, yeah.